So good evening, everybody. Today is February the 6th, 2020. And the topic tonight is immune. So I have selected the, um, the, the graphic for this evening is like people, it's like a defense and all that is like fighting, fighting, fighting. So our immune system is really our first um, line of defense because our immune system it has to figure out what is um, where do we where do I begin and and where do I end and then be able to um, defend the my body and my whole body's ecosystem against what it is that's outside so it really is a very um, like symbolically it's it's a lot it, it can symbolize a lot and also the reason why I I um, picked this topic this evening is I still have close family in Hong Kong and I'm on um, like on uh, WeChat and on WhatsApp with them quite a bit, like at least a couple of times a day, we would be, you know, WhatsApping back and forth. And they've been keeping me updated to what's happening in China, what's happening in Hong Kong. And it's, it's a little crazy. It's getting really quite out of hand, this, this um, outbreak of the coronavirus. I remember the latest photo that I got from from my sister actually who's um, in in Hong Kong I, I'm not sure whether she took it herself or she saw it on like some some media and decided to uh, send me that photo it's really a photo of a woman holding a a young child maybe two three years old and um, she has a, a mouth guard on and holding the baby uh, or I would say young child in her arms and on top of that she's actually have a big plastic like see-through plas plastic bag over herself the plastic bag was big enough to cover herself her child from top to almost about her knee area so I saw this photo I was like oh my gosh this is really crazy that people would just go um, take the, the public transit looking like that with a big plastic bag over them, thinking that this is going to protect them. And I was like, oh my God, what the heck people is, is, um, is really up to now? And I know it is e easy for me to think that they are crazy and poke fun at them. And I really know that, um, yes, from their point of view, this is very different because a lot of people in China may not have the education level that I had and they may not have access to more scientific um, I would, uh, opinions or side of the matter for them to decide what is, is good for them or not. All they know is the best way and the cheapest way that they can find to protect themselves. So these really bizarre and, and um, like crazy looking photos get posted. And who am I really to poke fun at other people for not being given the chance to play on an even field? And so what I'm trying to say is, I, before I go any further, I want to set the stage is, is that number one i am not a doctor so what i'm telling you now is not from the point of view as a doctor and i don't even pretend to be a healer well not anymore anyways i'm not talking from any of that point what um, who i am who i consider myself am and talking from is the position of an explorer of consciousness on this episode so from the point of angle um, that I'm exploring consciousness and really looking at all of that, then this is what I'm talking from today. So when I am, actually all this started when I was researching last week's topic, which was the, our nervous system. 
I was actually looking into Wim Hof's method. Um, Wim Hof is re called, also called the, the Iceman. And when I was looking at his method, how he uses cold, like extreme coldness and breath to get to the point where he can actually um, be able to regulate his own body temperature so that like usually if usually what the body does is if we are cold if we let's say uh, take a cold shower it will drop our body temperature or at least we will feel cold and it takes a while for our body to actually um, get back to the the, the, the right degree of, of warmth for ourselves. And if you, right after a cold shower, if you touch your skin, it would be cold because our um, system is such that we, we take information from the outside and it modulates how our body reacts. However, Wim Hof, with his method, he was able to get to the point where even in, in after he immersed himself in ice cold water, like the, I think the, the the record was about two hours in ice cold water. If you touch his skin, it's still warm. His skin temperature does not go down, and that's why he was able to be able to um, withstand the ice cold water for such a long time. Because if he didn't, he, if he was not able to do that he would have suffered hypothermia and, and that. And um, if anybody has experienced hypothermia, you know that is that, but that's the case. However, he managed to get to the point where he took charge of how his body reacts to the environment rather than letting his body just react to whatever comes. And um, he actually, has did one um, let's say a test where they injected some endotoxin right into his bloodstream and they monitor him and he was actually able to consciously get his own immune system to mobilize it so that it neutralized the the toxins that they injected right into his bloodstream into his bloodstream and he was not uh, he didn't get sick he, he didn't have any reaction whereas the same thing um, done to someone else to actually uh, most people i think they they injected the same endotoxin to uh, about like 50 over other 50 other people and the other people they don't their their immune system is not under their control so they got ill. They have different varying uh, reactions. Whereas when they do that to Wim Hof and they monitor it, it's not something that, you know, he, he just, not a story that he made up. It's actually documented. And so it is real. He was able to control his own immune system to that level. And he didn't stop there. He was like, you know, like if it's just him, then maybe we can also chalk, we just chalk it up to, well, he's a freak of nature, so he's special. So the, the rest of the, the, the other um, mortal human, human beings can't do that. He actually demonstrated by teaching, just randomly taking 12 other people and teach them his method. And they were able to, have the same experience as he did. So he actually has demonstrated that we have a lot more control over our body, our immune system, and how our body works. So what's the difference? The difference is he made a choice. He made a choice that he is in control and not let the body do what most people do. He made a choice to take charge of his body, his immune system, and he created this um, relationship with his body so that his body can co-create the experience that he wanted. 
So we know that this can be done. We know because it's already demonstrated by Wim and all the, the, the students. They are actually, since he started doing this, he has taught a lot of people to do this, to do the same thing. So it's, it's something that we can learn to do. Anyone can learn to do. The question that we should ask ourselves is why don't we co-create with our body that way? How do we get to the point where we have abdicated our ability to co-create with our body? And I want everybody to just pause and, and ponder this question. And you don't need to have an answer right now. Just keep that at the back of your mind. Because the answer to this question may be unique to everyone. And all I'm doing is just invite you all to ponder this question and observe how you have consent to go along with this game. It really is a game. We have a body. We've had this body for as long as we know. Since the beginning of human history, we have this body. However, we somehow has lost that ability to co-create with our body. Our health, our immune system, our ability to enjoy a strong, vibrant body is really a game. It's a big game. And knowing that we actually can control our health exposes this game because whenever you are ill, anytime you feel um, not your best, you should raise a flag and ask yourself this question. Where have I abdicated my responsibility to co-create with my body? Instead of just getting frustrated with our body because it somehow failed you, for some reason, and it actually made you took time to look at and be and have to nurse your body back to health. Your body is actually always giving you feedback, always. However, not too many of us is accustomed to listening to the feedback of our body. Most of the time, we would just say, "Oh, just push through it." I'm not saying that we shouldn't push through it. Just do it even if it's not right. Because there are some things, just like any bodybuilder would tell you, that, that you have to push through the pain in order to build up your body. However, that is really, we, um, when we do that, we have to do it consciously. Because when a bodybuilder pick up the weights and starting to put on more and more weights. They do it consciously. It's a choice. However, a lot of people don't really make that choice consciously. From a consciousness point of view, I want to point out that we, our body, I should say, we and our body create illness unconsciously because we are not prepared to look at what our body's intelligence is asking us to look at at a conscious level. So whenever in an illness, whether it is a, um, a serious illness or chronic illness or anything like that, and for that matter, any kind of accidents, it is similar, it's more of the same, is that somehow our body is giving us a message and is creating these experiences on a very unconscious level. I have to stress that it's very unconscious. Because most people don't know that um, well, when we get ill, it's an unconscious co-creation with our body. And when we co-create that kind of, of um, of experience with our body, we know that it's because on some level, 
our consciousness is not ready to look at something that is real and present. And when we keep um, when we keep sweeping these these messages from our body under the rug, that then actually it will come a day when the body is just too overwhelmed to be able to stay healthy and that's when illness really take in and be able to um, give us an experience that we don't choose well or we think we didn't choose at a conscious level but unconsciously we actually chose that by all of the times that we have ignored the warning signs now immune system is really as I've mentioned, our immune system is our defense against the hostile elements outside of our body. And, we choose, and when we choose to play the victim's role, that's when we, um, when, we, when we choose to play the victim's role at a conscious or not so conscious level, then our immune system really don't stand a chance. It's really about letting go of that victim role and knowing that we are not the victim of our body we're not the victim of the illness we actually have full control over that it's been proven by the Wim Hof method it's not about the flight or fight response because we know that um, the fight or flight and the victim aggressor, those are really paradigm. And it's really just a game. And the aim of this game is really to wake us up. Come on, wake up. It's our body trying to let us know and help us to see the absurdity of this paradigm of illness, being unconscious, choosing to play the victim of the, of the immune system, victim of all the viruses that's out there, or all the different illnesses that's out there, there really is no victim. You just chose at a very unconscious level to experience that rather than look at life at a very conscious level and make the hard choices that you needed to make in order to be true to yourself rather than trying to live up to some other people's gain. So for me, that is what I think of. It's at the bottom of this, that's really controlling our immune system is it's a matter of making a choice. Do you want to take control, 100% control consciously to the point that you can influence your own immune system, influence how not just your own immune system, how your body age or don't age, how your body respond to what's happening outside of you so that you can choose your emotions, your mood, so that you can choose it rather than just um, be at the mercy of whatever else that's happening outside. And having said all that, I have to also mention that it takes a very conscious being, person, soul, to see through this game. And for the rest of us, for those who are not ready to look and live life to that conscious level to really choose and live from your creator soul self then what else can we do so i do have a few suggestions for those people or for even for the people that are um, healthy and conscious and especially for those who are not ready to look at their life at such a brutally honest level that there are still things that you can do to make sure that your immune system is good. 
But first and foremost, of course, I would highly suggest that you listen to your body. When you eat, don't try to eat while you are doing um, a podcast or doing 10 other different things. When you eat, take the time to consciously pay attention to the food you eat. Because the food you put in plays a big part in how your body is going to feel, how your immune system is going to um, function as well. So make sure that you avoid um, genetically modified food. Make sure that you actually eat real food rather than um, you know, fast food, rather than uh, junk food. Eat real and hopefully you prepared yourself and, and if you prepared for yourself, then make sure that when you prepare the food is be happy. Eat happy, healthy, real food. And listen to how your body reacts to the food that you eat. If you eat something and your body gives you a message, oh my gosh, I don't quite like that um, deep fried stuff or that, that um, food that you ordered. Um, so listen to your body. Your body actually gives you a response. Usually um, right away, it will give you some sort of response. You don't really have to wait too long. And even, <clears throat> so listen to your body. Listen to how your body feels after you had you know, um, a meal. Does it feel like it's alive and vibrant? Or does it kind of look like you dropped a ton of bricks on yourself? So listen to your body. Support your body by giving it real, nutritious, happy food. And the next thing is, instead of just taking the easy way by popping a pill to mask symptoms of whatever um, experience that your body is having, like if, if your body is giving you pain, instead of popping a pill, is to really take a look at what's causing that pain. Feel into the pain instead of just labeling it at, oh my gosh, this is pain. I don't want it. Just get it away from me as soon as possible. And here is a pill and I'm just going to take it and forget it and be able to just go about the rest of my life um, as if nothing actually happened. Because when you feel pain or any other kind of discomfort in your body, is your body trying to communicate with you? So pay attention. And you may want to try this out, is to, instead of rejecting the pain, is to um, take the, the, pretend that you are an alien. If you, have, you have never felt pain in your life before or you have never felt this sensation in your life before and that this is the first time you ever feel this. So allow yourself to actually feel whatever experience your body is giving you. Instead of holding your breath and trying to resist it, is to just allow this experience in and to feel whatever the experience is fully and actually allow your body to breathe. Because when we don't breathe properly, it actually adds to the unpleasant experience rather than making it better. When you feel pain or any other kind of unpleasant sensation, then feel into it. And breathe through it without any judgment and without deciding whether you don't like it or not. Just feel it, breathe through it, allow your body to just relax. And sometimes by just relaxing, you would feel that 
those negative sensations may start to ease off to a, a level that is tolerable. I'm not saying not to take a pill. I'm just saying to just feel into it before you pop a pill is to just feel into it and do all of that. Relax your body, breathe into it. And if and when you still can't bear that sensation, then take a pill or do whatever. But don't just, as a matter of fact, just pop a pill and forget about it and charge on. That's really disrespect, disrespecting your own body. The next thing is educate yourself. Don't be one of those people who do more research about which restaurant they should go to, which movie they should see, or which car they should buy, or which handbag they should buy, those, all of those things. A lot of people spend more time researching those than researching what's good for their own health. That's just not, um, that's, that's, that's really um, well, priority. It's a matter of priority. Take the time to educate yourself. Really look into Wim Hof, for example. Sifu James, for example, Chematic Energy Healing. Look into homeopathic medicine. Look into biofeedback, magnetic therapy, EFT, like tapping. There are so many alternative um, ways of healing our body and keeping our body healthy. Take the time to educate yourself to know the alternatives to before you actually um, develop any illness is to do the research beforehand so so that when you actually needed them you already know what you can do rather than just pop a pill because popping a pill it's really masking the um, masking the and managing and masking what's underneath so look at what's underneath and educate yourself. And the next thing I can suggest is to manage your stress. Things to do to manage your stress, well, um, meditation, go for a walk, be in nature, be around people that are upbeat, and um, or just being around people that supports you, that hears you out. And last but not least, things that I can suggest is to fall in love with your life. Because I don't know if you notice that when you're in love, you really um, don't get ill very often when you're in love with life itself it actually is the best medicine create a life that you can actually seriously love and well i'm suggesting that when you can do that your immune system would take care of itself so that's all I have to say in terms of my um, <laughs> spiel on immune system.